What's up guys, this is Ben from Life in 360 and today I'm going to show you how to use Insta360 Studio which is an amazing 360 video editing software that allows you to edit 360 footage from no matter which camera you've got, you can edit it into whichever manipulation you like. And the amazing thing about this software is it's completely free. When I first discovered it, I thought I hit the jackpot, it's like surely more people know about this but I was pretty much the only person that I knew of that had discovered this software. And when I saw what it could do, I realized it could do a lot of the stuff that some 360 software companies that are charging three, four, five hundred dollars for um, completely for free. So this is a really good find and it doesn't take long to learn at all. So I'm gonna teach you exactly how to use it. All right, so firstly, we're going to go to the Insta360 website. And you guys might know Insta360 for their cameras. Uh, they've got some awesome cameras, including the Nano, the Insta360 Air and the Pro. So they're an awesome company that happened to make this awesome free software. So thanks guys, you're legends. And we're going to go to the download section. I'll link this in the description. Um, but it's pretty easy to find on their website as well. So on their download page, we'll just go Mac or Windows, I'm on Mac, and click download. So here's the basic interface. Uh, it's as simple as just dragging our photo or video straight into that main window there. So let's just pick one at random here. And here we have a 360 photo I've taken, uh, and it's or automatically recognized it as a 360. Um, and there we go, we can pan around it straight away. Um, so with photos, um, you can only output photos. Uh, so if you want to edit tiny planets or you want a specific view within your 360, so say I want a flat image of the opera house there, I'll just click photo and then save that to my desktop. And automatically that exports it at full resolution, at the maximum resolution in relation to how big the photo actually was to begin with. So another cool feature is you can edit tiny planets here. So this is essentially the, the tiny planet equivalent for your Mac or PC as many of the editing apps you might use like Roll World on smartphones. Um, so this is a really handy PC uh, tiny planet editor and it's free again. So here we can edit our tiny planets, um, do whatever we like and it's as simple as just zooming in and out on your mouse. Um, very, very intuitive. Uh, doesn't, it's not complex at all. I suck big time at post-production and After Effects. Can't use After Effects to save my life. However, click and drag works in my books. So it's very easy to pick up. So let's say I, I'm happy with that tiny planet. Again, I'll just hit the photo button there, which is screenshot, which will export uh, quite a large photo. So if you want to turn a photo into a video, what you'll need to do is firstly bring it into your editing program like Premiere, drag it out to about 60 seconds and then export it as a video. At the moment you can't edit photos into animated videos just yet in Insta360 but that's a fast way to, to work around it. Then you just simply bring it back into Insta360 and edit a video like you would any other video. So on the left hand side here we can also open up our browser if you want to bring in video or photo files um, but it's even easier just dragging and dropping into the middle window there. So I'm gonna grab some 360 footage and drop it into the timeline and show you how the video animation aspect of it works. So it's already playing, it's already displaying in 360, which is awesome. Um, it should recognize basically any footage from any camera that you're using. So hopefully you don't encounter any issues there. Um, this first screen that I'm looking at is the viewer, um, aka Panoplay as they call it. Um, so this is just for having a quick preview of your image. Um, if you just want to have a look around uh, and see how it looks in 360, what we're going to do is we want to start animating this footage. Um, so we can turn it into tiny planets or we can change the perspective from one end of the, the camera to the other um, and stay in tight, we can do whatever we like. But what we'll need to do is go into recorder mode. So now that we're in recorder mode, um, 
now our timeline is usable down the bottom here. And what I like about this software is that it has very few buttons and it's very easy to pick up. Um, so here's our main panel of options. Um, so firstly, what I'm going to do is just select um, a portion of the footage that I want to use. So let's say I want to make it a minute and a half. Um, here we have uh, start times and end times. So we're essentially going to crop off the beginning and end and start and end where we want to. So I'm gonna, going to start about 12 seconds in and just press that button there and it, it brings my starting point up to roughly the 12 second mark and say I want to end at two minutes so I'll click this one here and now we have roughly um, our start and end points. All right, so the first thing we need to do to start editing is add our first keyframe. So we'll wanna to go to the very start of the footage and essentially anywhere you place your first keyframe, so say we'll place it there and that's maybe at the 13 second mark and we make a manipulation, say looking down, um, everything before that is going to be at that manipulation. So there are a few different viewing modes as we can see down in this corner here. Um, you might want to have a play around with them. I've found the most helpful mode to edit in is Little Planet. Even if you don't want to create a little planet, it gives you the most flexibility, lets you zoom out as far as you want or zoom in as far as you want within the image. Um, the other ones end up with a black border around if you zoom out too far and it starts skewing the image too much. Um, so Little Planet, even if you don't want to do a little planet, um, is the best editing mode to edit in. So what we want to do is travel between several points about 360. So this means creating several keyframes, which we will then tell Insta360 to move between, almost like there's a camera person there in the frame, moving the camera around, spinning around, going up, down, all around as we please. Um, so this is very easy and intuitive and requires mainly just clicking and dragging, which is the idiot's way to do it, which makes me very, very happy. So now that we're in little planet mode, we'll go to our second keyframe. Um, we started roughly down here, and all you need to do is just do that to go back. And we can see it's now spun around. Okay, well that's not very interesting, is it? So I think I wanna change that second keyframe, so I'll just click that and zoom out. So now it's going to spin around 180 and zoom out within that eight second transition point. So it starts at one there, and it zooms out to keyframe two. All right, I like that. So let's create a third one. So how about we follow this couple here as our next camera movement? So let's say by second 25, I want to end up in quite close on them and have the camera follow them as they walk away from the camera. So if we just go back a bit, now let's see. And already it's done it, it's rendered it, and now we can preview it. The 360 has moved to follow that couple. That's awesome. It's so quick and intuitive. Um, so now it's as simple as adding as many keyframes as you like. Um, it might add a third one where it keeps going and turns into an inverted planet. That looks really cool. So again, now we'll just go back and it's already prepared the, the animation for us. And there we go, it's going into an inverted planet. And already we've got four different key points, keyframes, um, that was so fast and easy to do. Um, that would have taken me hours to work out how to do in After Effects. I'm really grateful for this program. Um, so yeah, you wanna add as many points as you want. So I'm going to go back into, into little planet mode with our next uh, keyframe. Okay, so moving your keyframes is very easy. So I think this, this transition is taking a little bit too long. Um, I want that to happen, say, within two or three seconds. So it's just a matter of clicking on the keyframe and then dragging it back. So now, instead of 10 seconds, it's gonna take about two or three. 
transitions now. Yeah, it's a fast transition. It's good to mix things up and make them exciting. So if you want to alter the, your keyframes, you can do that at any point within your timeline. Just grab a keyframe and move it along to another point. So therefore this transition gets longer and this one gets shorter. So now that we've done that, we can see that it transitions, but the transition isn't very smooth. The start and end goes So that's not really a, an ideal camera move because you do want it to ease in and not be so jarring. Um, and there's a way we can avoid that. And what we do to change our transitions is you click on the line in between the two keyframes and that will give us our transition effect options. Um, at the moment it's smooth dissolve, but that wasn't so smooth, was it? But I think the one we want here is fade in, fade out. So now let's have a look. And see how at the end, instead of going like this, it went like that. So it smoothed into a, it slowed to a stop instead of stopping suddenly. Um, there are a number of different transitions. There's just six of them here. Um, there's slip in, fade out, fade in, slip out, slip in, slip out, and smooth dissolve. So slip in, fade out. Let's just try that one quickly. So slip in, fade out is essentially means start quick, end slow. So start unsmoothly and then end smoothly. Um, and obviously fade in, slip out is the opposite of that. Slip in, slip out is, let's have a look. So slip in, slip out is essentially um, quick movement at the start, slow in the middle, quick movement at the end. Um, I find most of the time either smooth dissolve or fade in, fade out is the best because that allows the most seamless transition um, of speed between your, all your various movements. Um, you don't want it too jarring. You never really want it to, to stop or obviously stop. You can have it slow to a stop, but when it's just constantly going like this, this, this can be really um, overwhelming for the viewer, uh, whereas you can make it a much smoother experience. So you might want to have a play around. Um, each transition w might require a different kind of, of uh, effect, transition effect. So play around with all of them depending on what the actual tra two transition points are. If it's a big one, um, you want to make it as smooth as possible. If it's a small one, um, you can make it a little bit more, more jarring if, if you feel that's best. So once we're, we're happy with our animation, I, it turns out I didn't use all of this footage here. So I'm going to move that end marker um, forward to about the 40 second mark. So we have, and move this one forward a tiny bit. So we have our final animation plays out as so. We start down low, we go up and spin, and then we go, we follow the couple as they walk, and we're going to zoom out into an inverted planet, and finally do our crazy little movement. It's on crack and end up there into our tiny planet. So I'm happy with that and I'm going to end it there. So now we simply export using the, the right hand section um, up here. Um, at the moment there isn't a lot of exporting options. I'm sure in future releases they're going to update um, your export options. At the moment 1920 by 1080 is the max you can export at. Um, you can export it lower than that or custom uh, sizes, but yeah, I'd go for the full 1920 if I were you. Honestly, like this is a free software, you can't expect it to be as good as Premiere or After Effects. Um, and look, I'm sure it actually will be one day, but for now I'm just going to be happy with what I'm given because it's pretty incredible uh, what this can do. And it's just as simple as choosing an export location and hitting export. Okay, so that's how you edit one single 360 video at a time. Normally I like to do just one because I do a daily Instagram post every day and when I want to do something like this, an advanced 360 animation, I'll do that for one singular shot and upload it to Instagram just so it's not too choppy and changey. Um, however, if you want to do several different videos within the same video, you'll have to do it one at a time and then 
bring that into your editing program, combine them there. At the moment, you can't um, edit several videos within Insta360 Studio. It's just one at a time. And unfortunately, you can't save your projects either. So you'll need to do all your manipulations and then export as a video file, which is a very workable workflow, in my opinion, um, because I only need to do one at a time anyway. I did have a music video project where I had about nine or 10 shots total. Um, so I had to do them one at a time, export them, bring them into Premiere, combine them in Premiere, sync them up, and then export as one video later. So it wasn't really a huge issue to be honest. I'm sure with future releases, they'll, they'll allow you to edit multiple clips. At the moment, it's just the one. So this has been one of the most amazing finds I've ever come across um, in my very short 360 career. Um, and it, allows you to create really impressive works very easily um, and really get the most out of your 360 footage. It doesn't matter which camera you're shooting on, which is so cool. Um, I've literally edited four different cameras footage in this free program. So you might wanna check it out and get a hang of it if you wanna take your 360 video editing to the next level. If you enjoy making tiny planet photos and videos, you might want to check out my ebook. It's called Life in 360, A Beginner's Guide to Tiny Planet Photography. It's going to teach you everything you need to know about creating tiny planets, tiny planet video like we've done here. Um, it'll teach you everything, so check it out. Until next time, guys, keep living your life in 360, and feel free to follow us on all the social media channels. We'll be posting heaps of cool content in 2017. I can't wait to share it with you guys. Oh, and by the way, don't tell anyone about this. Let's just keep it a little secret between you and me and we can create awesome 360 videos and leave everyone wondering how we did it and we'll just say it's magic. All right guys, until next time, ciao.